Hello, crime correspondent Martin Brunt is in Liverpool for us. So, good evening, Martin. Uh, what's the latest there tonight? We've heard nothing official um, from the police today, but we know they are working behind the scenes and we've seen evidence of that here from midday. A forensic team turned up uh, in Sutcliffe Street in Kensington. This is where the suspect bomber was living uh, in a, a privately run asylum uh, seekers hostel. Bit of a rundown place, but it was also here on th on Sunday night, a few hours after the bomb went off, that police turned up, armed police, and arrested um, three uh, potential suspects. They were questioned um, and then were released. It's still, as far as we can tell, the very strong theory of the police that the bomber was working alone. No evidence yet uh, of any kind of support network, but police are working through his own electronic devices, his phone, his computer, his use of social media, trying to pick up a picture um, of him and those that, uh, that he knew. Now, we do know that he was uh, from the Middle East and he was a failed asylum seeker in the UK. And we spoke earlier to a charity that helps asylum seekers and we asked if the bomber had approached that charity. Had he come here for support? Had he? Had he? Uh, yeah, at some at various points uh, from 2014 on, um, we kind of lost sight of him around 2017. But not not for unusual things, not for strange things. It, it's the, the things that people normally ask for in the asylum system: clothing, or uh, help with support, or help finding a solicitor. You know, it's, it's those kind of things that uh, people ask for. It's also widely reported that after the charity lost contact uh, with the bomber, he went on to convert uh, from being a Muslim to embrace Christianity. One aspect of the police investigation will be to see whether him embracing Christianity was perhaps a ploy for any renewed asylum application. Martin, thanks very much indeed.